Apollo speaking. Yes. Someone to work part-time? Why, well, yes, I'll send someone down to see you. Someone who'll do the caliber of work you expect. Goodbye. Work. There's a word that's used much more than it's understood. As counselor here at our school, I get to hear and see a great deal about work and what it means. Good work, fair work, Poor work. I'd like to tell you about a certain student who was here about five years ago. His experience has important meaning for you. When Frank Taylor started in his first real job, he had only a vague idea about work, his responsibility to his employers, and to himself. But suppose we let Frank tell his own story. It all started with a sign in the window of Canfield's shoe store. Sounded good, a chance to earn money for some of the things I wanted. So I talked to Mr. Canfield. We got along all right and, well, I got the job. It wasn't bad for a week or so, but then I began to get bored. It was just put shoes away, day after day. Put shoes away. Put more shoes away. Nothing ever broke the routine. All I did was put shoes away. And then the pay I got. Huh. That wouldn't buy many of those things I wanted. The shoe business was no good. And just because I got to work a half hour late now and then, I didn't understand why Mr. Canfield should get mad. When I had a customer, it was tiny shoes on big feet. These didn't look right. These didn't fit right. These were too expensive. These hurt her feet. Boy, some of those people really made me sick. I didn't last very long. But then it was only a job. I figured I could get another job through the school guidance counselor. Well, Frank, I've looked over your school graves. I've checked the results of your personality and aptitude tests. I've spoken to some of your teachers. I think I have a job you should be able to fill. That's great, Mr. Barlow. The job I have in mind is at Mr. Canfield's shoe store. What is it, Frank? Well, I... I don't think Mr. Canfield would hire me. Why not? Because he just fired me. Haven't you got a different job, maybe, somewhere? Just a minute, Frank. If Mr. Canfield fired you, you might have the same sort of trouble somewhere else. Would you like to tell me about the job and what happened? Well, nothing happened. The, the job was just dull and routine. The, the same things every day. Uh, I was just bored with it. You know, Frank, I don't think there is such a thing as a dull job. But suppose you tell me what you think is interesting work. Oh, I think it would be exciting to be an architect or an airplane pilot. Yes, those can be interesting jobs. Or they can be dull and routine too, depending on your mental attitude. Why do you suppose an architect finds interest in his work? Because he does something important designs houses and buildings and bridges and, and lots of things. Yes, an architect does help to make things that people need. And he can look with pride on the completed structure. And the pilot provides transportation that people need. He can be proud of his skill and his record of safe flying. But what about, oh, a teacher? Can't she be proud of her service to the community? Are druggists important? Where would you be without them? Or without fishermen? Or chemists? Or bank clerks? Or shoe salesmen? Don't they do something useful, something important for people? Look, Mr. Barlow, I didn't take that job to do anything important. I just wanted a little spending money. Any job, piloting a plane or selling shoes, is as important as you make it. 
If you think it's not important, whatever it is, you'll soon become bored with it and do it poorly. To enjoy your work, you'll need to find in it more than money. You'll need personal satisfaction, pride of accomplishment, a sense of importance to others. Whether it's a part-time job after school or a lifetime career. And as for money, well, we all want money. But if you don't perform any service, or if you don't do your work well, you can't expect much in return, can you? Why, guess not. If your work is to profit you, it must also profit your employer and profit society. But how can you do a job well if it isn't interesting? It wouldn't be much of a job if you couldn't find something interesting about it. Here, these are records of former students I helped get started in jobs. Most of them used to think very much as you do about jobs, but I'd like you to know what they think of their work now. Russell's my name. I'm a carpenter. That's work I really enjoy. Have you ever felt the smoothness of a board after you've planed it? Have you ever smelled fresh cut wood? Have you ever made something with your own hands? You can't help enjoying work in which you can take a real pride. I'm Ed Kane, farmer. I suppose I started farming in the first place because I like the open air and, and the soil. But there's more to it than that. The hard work of plowing, planting, cultivating, all leads to the harvest that means success to me and food for people throughout the world. So to me, there's real satisfaction in farm. Dottie Grant is my name. I'm a secretary. To some people, that means just numbers and letters, taking dictation and typing. Well, it's more than that to me. The work that passes through my hands means work for men in factories, keeps railroaders busy shipping our goods, and give salesmen something to sell. My job is important to many people, and to me. I'm glad to say that I enjoy doing it as well as I can. Enjoy doing it as well as you can. You see, Frank, there are many ways of looking at a job, any job, with pride and pleasure. All right, now let's see what other job we can find for you. Or, Mr. Barlow, do you think Mr. Canfield would take me back if you asked him to? Well, after Mr. Barlow talked Mr. Canfield into giving me another trial, I found new interest in that job. It was easy to get to work on time, and, and when I really applied myself to my work, there was nothing dull or routine about it. It wasn't long before I began to see how much other people depended on fellows like me, to give them properly fit shoes. Shoes that would wear well and look well. I became proud of the fact that I was building a circle of personal customers. People who came to me regularly for all their shoes. So in him, Mr. Canfield was willing to give me more responsibility and more pay. It was no longer just a job. Because I had found interest in my work, naturally I did better work. I became more valuable to Mr. Canfield and to his customers and, of course, to myself. Well, that's the story, almost. That was five years ago. The reason I told you about Frank Taylor is that he called me just now. He needs a part-time helper. You see, he's manager of Canfield Shoe Store now. Does this begin to sound like fiction? It does happen. It happened to Frank because he found interest in his work and satisfaction in doing it to the best of his ability. Every day, someone, somewhere, learns that more money and more satisfaction are the result when you stop thinking about just the job, and begin thinking about work. 